Oh, welcome again, our video friends. Appreciate you being with us today. Uh, we are glad to have you along for today's uh, look at the scriptures uh, through the Bible as we as we intend to go through it. The Lord willing, as he gives me days and time to do so, uh, we hope to go through the scriptures uh, and just, uh, 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 with a look as we go at all of them. Chapter 36 of the book of Genesis is given over entirely to the generations of Esau. And uh, we'll read through this, we'll, and I'll make a few comments as we go, but the entire chapter is given over to the generations of Esau. And remember, Esau was a descendant of Abraham, and as God had promised to Abraham, he'd be the father of many nations. Now, such as these nations born from Esau were, uh, Abraham was the... Uh, was actually the granddaddy of them all. Now, not to, not to think for a moment that these were uh, godly nations or godly dukes, as they're called, or godly kings. Uh, there's nothing to tell us that at all. And as you'll know, as we read down through here, you'll recognize some of these names. And you'll see these names appear again in the scriptures as enemies of the children of, of the Lord and children of Israel. Uh, but let's, let's get into this study right here. And I think it's very interesting. Not that it has much to do with our days and lives, but uh, it's an interesting historical part of the Bible. Now these are the generations of Esau, who is Edom. Now Edom is also called Seir in the Bible. It is the country lying south of the ancient uh, kingdom of Judah, extending from the Dead Sea to the Gulf of Aqaba, includes the ruins of Petra, and is bounded on the north by Moab, uh, is people by descendants of Esau. And uh, there's a lot said about uh, the Edomites throughout the scriptures. And of course, they are all descendants of Esau. Let's read. Esau took his wives of the daughters of Cana, Adal, uh, the daughter of Elon, the Hittite, and Elohim, uh, the daughter of Anna, uh, the daughter of Zibion, uh, the Hiv Hivite, now we'll see these names again, the Hittites and, and so forth, and the Hittites as we go through the scriptures and see Israel battling with these people in years to come. And Bathsheba, uh, Ishmael's daughter, sister of uh, Nebajoth, and Adam bare to Esau, uh, Elpaz, and Bathsheba bare Ruel, and uh, Aholabon uh, bare Jesh, and Julam, and Korah, these are the sons of Esau, which were born unto him in the land of Canaan. And Esau took his wives and his sons and his daughters and all the persons of his house and his cattle and all his beasts and all his substance, which he had got in the land of Canaan, and went into the country from the face of his brother Jacob. Now notice this. This is a very interesting uh, event that's happening right here. And it happened before uh, between Abraham and Lot. For the Verse 7, for the riches were more than that they might dwell together. And the land wherein they were strangers could not bear them because of the cattle. What about this? And we see right here, uh, Esau being the ones to move his family and to leave Jacob where he was. Very interesting, isn't it? Because it was promised unto Jacob that this land would be unto him uh, uh, and his seed forever. And for a strange reason, even though Esau had never left the land, Right here, we see him leaving the land and taking his families and his wealth. He was a very wealthy man, Esau was. Uh, in spite of the <clears throat> birthright going to Jacob, um, <clears throat> Esau as well became a very wealthy man. The Bible says again, verse 7, for the riches were more than that they might dwell together. Uh, it said the land could not bear them. And so... Uh, <clears throat> We see Esau being the one here who seems to take the lead <clears throat> and uh, go into a different place. And uh, so it's very interesting. Uh, so we know some good things about Esau. And right here we know another seemingly good thing about him. Verse 8, Thus dwelled Esau in Mount Seir, Esau's Edom. And these are the generations of Esau, the father of the Edomites in Mount Seir. These, these are the names of Esau's sons. Uh, Eliphaz, the son of Hedah, uh, the wife of Esau, Ruel, uh, the son of Bashima, uh, the wife of Esau. The sons of Eliphaz were Teman, Ormon, Zepho, and Gadam, and Kenaz. 
And Timnah was concubine to Elipaz, Esau's son. And she bound to Elipaz and Amalek. And you'll see this name again uh, in the scriptures as well. And you're going to see later on that these families here, the Amalekites and the Hittites and the Hivites, uh, become fierce enemies of Israel and were driven out of the land. And they even had some giants among them. And uh, these people were not worshipers of the true and living God. They quickly turned aside. As we very well believe that Esau turned aside from following the Lord God, and his descendants seemed to have turned greatly away from following the Lord God. And the fact that he married women uh, from the land of Cana from some of these strange families, again, probably expedited this matter uh, these families uh, turning away from the Lord God and being worshippers of uh, uh, false gods like the neighbors around about them in the land of Canaan. Now these are the sons of Ruel, Nahab, and Zerah, and Shabna, and Mazra. These were the sons of Bashemoth, Esau's wife. And these were the sons of the whole Bama, uh, the daughter of Anna, the daughter <coughs> of Zibion, Esau's wife. And she bare to Esau, uh, Jewish and Jala and Korah. These were the dukes. Now the word dukes, that means uh, uh, chiefs of thousands. So notice this right here. This is a large number of descendants we're talking about. Thousands and thousands. These were the dukes of the sons of Esau. The son of Elipas, uh, the firstborn was Esau, Duke Teman, Duke Omar, uh, Duke Zippo, Duke Kenaz, uh, Duke Korah, Duke Gaten, and Duke Amalek. These are the dukes that came to Eliphaz and the land of Edom. These were the sons of Adah. <clears throat> Verse 17. And these were the sons of Ruel, Esau's sons, Duke Nahan, Duke Zerah, Duke Shama, Duke Masra, Masaf. These were the dukes that came of Ruel in the land of Edom. These were the sons of Bashemoth, Esau's wife. And these are the sons of the whole Laban. Esau's wife, Duke Jerish, Duke Jalam, and Duke Korah. These were the dukes that came of Aholabah, the daughter of Anna, Esau's wife. These are the sons of Esau, who is Edom. These are their dukes. Uh, these are the sons of Seir, the Horite, uh, who, in who inhabited the land, Lotan, and Shobah, and Zibion, and Anna, uh, and Dishon, and Ezar, and Dishan. These are the dukes of the Horites the children of Seir in the land of Edom. Now remember some of these family names. You're going to see these again as we go deeper into the scriptures. And you're going to see uh, that they did not love and serve God. In verse 22, And the children of Lotan were Hori, Heman, and Lotan's sister was Timnah. Uh, the children of Zobah were these, Avan, Manahath, and Ebal, and Shepo, and Onan, these are the children of Zibion, both Asia and Anna. Uh, that was that Anna that found the mules in the wilderness as he fed the asses of Zib Zibion, his father. Now we've got a little insert right here about Anna and the mules. And I think that's about all that we know in the scripture about these. Verse 25, and the children of Anna were these, Dishon and Aholabama, uh, the daughter of Amma. Uh, these are the children of Dishon, Himdan, and Eshban, and Arath, and Sh Shiran, uh, the children of Ezer, were these. Uh, Bilham, and Zaban, and Achan, uh, the children of Disha, are these, Uz and Aram. Now these are the dukes that came, that came of the Horatites, uh, Duke Lotan, Duke Shoba, Duke Zibion, uh, Duke Anan, Duke Dishan, Duke Ezer, uh, Duke Dish, uh, Dishan, uh, these are the dukes that came of Hori among their dukes in the land of Seir. Now notice right here in verse 31, we have here a list of the kings that reigned. Now this is the first list of kings in the Bible. And of course right here, we have the uh, natural before we find the scriptural. So it is uh, over in the New Testament, we have that first, which is natural, the natural man, and then we have, if he's born again, the spiritual man. So notice this right here in verse 31. And these are the kings that reigned in the land of Edom before there reigned any king over the children of Israel. Uh, and Belial, the son of Boreo, reigned in Edom. 
and the name of his city was Dihambal, and Bela died, and Jobah, the son of Zerah, of Bozrah, reigned in his stead. And Zobah died, and Hushan, of the land of Timan, reigned in his stead. And Hushan died, and Hadam, the son of Bedan, who smote Midian in the field of Moab, reigned in his stead, and the name of his city was Avith. And Hadan died, and Shamlah of Marishka reigned in his stead. And Shamlah died, and Saul of Rehoboth by the river reigned in his stead. And Saul died, and Baal Baal Hanan, the son of Achor, reigned in his stead. And Baal Hanahan, the son of Achor, died, and Hadar reigned in his stead. And the name of his city was Paul. And his wife's name was Mehetabel, the daughter of Matred, the daughter of Mezahabal. Uh, these are the names of the dukes that came of Esau according to their families after their places by their names, uh, Duke Timnah, Duke Elba, Duke Jareth, uh, Duke Aholoth Meha, uh, Duke Elaham, uh, Duke Pion, Duke Ken Kenaz, Duke Timnah, uh, Duke Mazmitzar, uh, Duke Magdal, Duke Aram, these be the dukes of Edom according to their inhabitants in the land of their possessions. He is Esau, the father of the Edomites. Well, what about that? And I guarantee you, I've not pronounced these names totally correctly. But uh, nonetheless, we see here a list of ancient kings that's very interesting to us who reigned uh, over Moab, uh, the land of Edom. I'm, I'm sorry the land of Edom, I said Moab. Uh, but these are the list of the kings of the Edomites, which are the generations of Saul, Esau. Now, uh, remember, you're talking right here in this chapter alone about thousands and thousands of people that descended from Esau. And uh, a list of kings right here, uh, probably 10 or 12 different kings that we have record of who ruled over the Edomites uh, down in that land of Edom. Well, it's, it's, quite a, uh, it's quite a book of genealogies at times. And you find genealogies again and again in the scriptures. And uh, I never realized how important that was till I picked up a book of Mormon one day. And a matter of fact, they, they brought it and gave it to me. And I began reading that. And I said, man, this thing is just nothing but a, uh, somebody's uh, imagination they've written down. And all the people that they claim lived there was no genealogist to verify any of those names uh, in that Book of Mormons or any of those peoples that they claim lived. Uh, and I, and uh, But if you pick up the Bible, uh, even Esau, we're told of much of his generations that lived after him. And uh, you take each one of these down here at the end of these names, uh, you pick up uh, Duke Iram, Iram, well, you can follow his generation back to Abraham and even back to Adam if you wanted to. Uh, thus it is with the true word of God. Uh, these uh, genealogies in the Bible uh, are very important about vindicating and showing the truth of the Bible. Uh, we're not for these. You pick up a book that doesn't have it, like the Book of Mormons, and you realize, hey, this is just not factual. There's no facts or truth to verify that these peoples and these cities ever even existed. And I don't think that they did. I don't think that they did at all, as they claim. But right here in the Bible, you can follow it back, many of them, all the way back to Adam himself. And so they're very important that we have because they bring some realness and some factual uh, vindicating to the scriptures. Now, this is not just a book of genealogies, though it has some. It has some very important ones, especially the genealogy of Jesus Christ. That is the main one that we're very interested in in the genealogies of Jesus Christ. And they also, the genealogy of Jesus Christ, takes you back through the lineage. And we know much of some of those people in the Bible and the prophecies about them and the prophecies of their son, to come, who is to be the Lord Jesus Christ. And so it's a very, very interesting book. And the more I read it and study it, the more I believe it. And the more I read it, the more it speaks to me. And the more I read it, 
the more of the Lord I learn and more of his word I, uh, I get in me. And it's a blessed experience. Well, my friends, may God bless you. Till the next time, I hope there can be many more. May God bless you.